people keep calling it retrospective, but it's not. It's just some different portraits at different periods in my life. Portraits. So, so we're looking at nearly or over 300 images. Can you tell us a little bit about how long the exhibition took to put together from sort of its first... You were being asked by Sandy Nairn. For so years, here, yeah. Five, five, six years ago. Yeah. So how long have you actually been putting it together? Three years. And how much, <coughs> how much mental energy does something like this, an undertaking like this, take? I mean, is it... A quite a lot. I'm quite good at storing things in my yeah. brain. But I couldn't do it without, you know, Mark, especially Mark. Your studio and, assistant. And, and the other people that work at the studio, you know, Fenton and Bones. Did they have a lot of input into the way it was hung? And, and no, hung no, 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 no. They just find, they just find no. the room. They have their opinions, but you listen to everybody and then make up your own mind. And how do you feel walking into an entire ground floor of work by yourself? I mean, it must feel slightly overwhelming for you or not? No. Not really. No, I must be honest, no. No. Didn't do anything really. I think, mm, maybe we can do it better next time. <laughs> Have you spent a lot of time rearranging? <laughs> no, I never rearranged them. I found over the years it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could have put that painting there or that photograph there. It wouldn't make any difference because things end up where they belong. So well, I didn't want to make it a precious thing like it's yeah. the Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only picture in the room. Yeah. You know, that's my joke with Vogue. Isn't it? If I gave them the Mona Lisa, they'd say, oh, did you do a full lens? <laughs> <laughs> So there's pictures that obviously there's going to be a huge public appetite to see. Was, it, was there a lot of pressure to kind of curate it in a particular direction? Or did you have 100% control? No, I had 100% control, of course. And uh, it's good for them because if people hate it, I'm, I'm going to... It's gonna, all on your shoulders. I, I don't mind taking the Your narrow the plane. shoulders. <laughs> always amazes me when people ask you to do something and try and tell you how to do it. I mean, it's... So bizarre. So you had real carte blanche. You know, I used to, when I made commercials, I directed lots of commercials, you know, to make some money so I could pay to do photography almost. But I'd employ the best lighting cameraman in America. But I wouldn't dream of telling him how to light it. Because yeah. why have I got him in the first place? And it leaves me free to do other things. I so said I don't have to worry about lighting. Yeah. And I take that attitude to people I use. Maybe not... You know, it's different when it's personal taste, you know, like fashion or hair, or then I'm going to interfere if it's a fashion picture or something, because if I think you're making a girl look wrong, I won't take the picture. We had to put my name on the sculptures. Yeah. Because otherwise people were going to start phoning up saying, who did the sculptures? Yeah. And people like to put you in a box, so it can't be Bailey, because he didn't do sculptures. Yeah. Or, so it's, I hate the idea of pigeonholing pigeon hole in it hole in anybody you know and be called a fashion photographer there's nothing wrong with being a fashion photographer but it's a bit limited I just like doing what I do and this is what I do so take it or leave it if you try and please everybody you'll never you end up with a camel yeah I think it looks fantastic good well you like it it's brilliant it looks fantastic and I like you so okay. we're in business aren't we